Jesus. Yes. what you're feeling I got the same thing man I'm having a hard time functioning I'm just shh more God more God 
before God. That's all I can do is stand up. Do what you want to do, God. I mean, there's a, there's a momentum that's building in here week after week after week. God's doing something. It's not just so we can have a giggle or a goosebump. But God's doing something. And that if you'll step out by faith, when you feel that, override your human mind that says, you, you can't dance. You don't know what you're doing. If you get out there, you're going to look stupid. I'd rather be a fool for Christ than anything else that I could possibly be in this world. We used to sing a song. <laughs> I will dance, I will sing to be mad for my king. Nothing in this can hindering this passion in my soul I will dance I will sing you know to be mad for my king this, this passion in my soul and I'll become even more undignified than this and they had motions too I remember y'all doing them and I'll become even more undignified than this Na 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 na. Hey. <laughs> oh, na 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 na. Hey. And they'd stick their tongues out and do all kinds of goofy stuff. Some of you remember that. Yeah. And and the one that I really appreciated the most watching do that song was Dave Goddard. He would just completely become all kinds of undignified. And you never knew what that guy was going to do. Some of you are going to become undignified. We're taking ourselves way too serious here. Na 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 na. Hey! hey! <laughs> and they do their hands. I mean, it was kind of like this little silly song, but it it, it 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 was such fun to sing. It was such joy. It brought such liberty. You know, the Word of God declares where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, freedom, freedom from yourself. Yes. And isn't that the one we struggle with the most? freedom from ourselves I just I'm not that way I'm just dignified I'm just quiet by nature I'm really reserved hogwash do it No, no, you go right ahead. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> National Church of God. I'll just borrow Mickey's walker. <laughs> Coming on this.
And she's directionally challenged, folks, let me tell you. She got there. You win. That took guts, man. Surrender. where we got connected because of Darcy yeah well you were right there with her <laughs> don't blame your mom accept responsibility for the mess you created this is your fault <laughs> it's still happening today People that have visions of the throne room as the angels are standing there in rank and file, all dignified, saying, Oh, blessed art thou, O Lord, who sits upon the... They're going bonkers. They can't... There is so much joy. The Bible says, In the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. They are coming unglued to where they can't take anymore. That you... When you get so full you can't take anymore, you're going to have a reaction of some sort. But as long as you're trying to hold it together, look dignified, say, well, I just can't, I just can't lose it. Why not? Why not lose it? Why not lay it all down for the joy of the Lord? We sing this song. We've been singing it for years. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. You're not laying anything down. What are you supposed to lay down? Your dignity. Your pride. Your control. You lay it all down. And when you do, and you get filled with the joy of the Lord, the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Not only does it say in the presence of the Lord there's fullness of joy, it's that at His right hand are pleasures forevermore. You start tapping into those kind of pleasures and you're going to be giggling and losing control and having the time of your life. Ecstasy. Overwhelming joy. God doesn't just want to give you a little dose. He's trying to dump the truck. But if we don't turn loose and we don't let go of the control and we don't lose our, dig our dignity, because before Him, we're nothing. Without Him, we're nothing. And He loves us more than we could ever know. He's prepared all of these things for us. If not now, when? If not here, where? If not us, then who? absolutely I've been longing for this and looking for this my whole adult life since I was a teenager when I grew up in an environment that there was no more move of God there was the church in Laodicea read the revelation so we're in the Laodicea age there's no more revival 
Just go hang out at the Rapture bus stop. Wait for Jesus to come. Watch the world go to hell in a handbasket. Something on the inside of me says, uh uh, I can't do that. I, I have hope. There is something on the inside of me that cried out for it, that longed for it, that wants to see it, that wants to participate in it. And man, we are this close. I mean, it's so close you can taste it. How long will you hold on to your way before you just lay it all down and say, God, do whatever you want? I'm tired of the same old, same old. I'm really tired of me. I was good, Kim. I'm really tired of me. I'm not tired of you. I'm tired of me. You don't need to be tired of me. You need to be tired of yourself. Let's get that straight. Yeah. Yeah. Let that old stuff die. Let it drop off. Say, well, I don't know what's going to happen. If it's from God, it's good. Well, what if it's the flesh? Well, gee, how many of us have never been in the flesh before? So that's not a valid excuse. But what if it is God? What, what if God is doing something new in your life? What if He wants to do something different and strange? <laughs> and peculiar. And suddenly, Michelle, step out now. The glory of God's all over you. If you're waiting for when church started, it started about 45 minutes ago. Uh, you get with the program. Lift your hands right there where you're at. Lift your hands. Close your eyes. Now. Let the glory of God envelop you, touch you, restore. God, what it looks like is gone, what's been lost. There's been things on the inside you've been asking God for, you've been saying, like to see everybody else get in touch, and you're saying, God, what about me? Thank you for what I got, but I'm hungry. You're hungry for something serious, substantial, life changing, and real. And God says, I heard that what you cry out the inside when you didn't even voice it to anybody else. God says, I heard. Boom! Encounters in the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. The fire of God come on you right now. The crown of your head to the soles of your feet. In the name of Jesus. Whoa. Whoa. Intense. Life changing. in the glory of God I pray in Jesus name Darcy turn around and do the feet thing Who? whoa man I am cooking with the fire of God right now whoa Jesus. Yep.
God's in His house. It's just big in here. Let God do what God wants to do. what I was going to talk to you about but what could I add to the hope that God's given us in a time of visitation like this if this doesn't give you hope you you got problems <laughs> yeah that God wants to set you free from there's not much I could do for you if this one doesn't give you hope I don't know what to tell you God's moving. God is moving, not just in here. God's moving in the earth. Keep playing, Cindy. I'm just going to talk a little bit. Um, for a little bit. Whoa! Man, I feel like I got the Toronto thing going on. <laughs> Whoa! For those of you who don't know, I went to my place in Fairmont. Took Ezra with me. Didn't get to leave till Tuesday. Had a bunch of stuff I was planning on trying to get done, like I always try to do. Took the tools, got there, mowed the grass, sat down, said, you know what? I need a rest. And as much as it was an oxymoron, I tried to get quiet with my grandson. <laughs> Ezra, if you happen to see this broadcast, Papa loves you. I'm talking about you. That boy starts talking from the time his feet hit the floor in the morning until the time you put him to bed at night. He does not stop. Literally. So if you wanted to get quiet, you picked the wrong week, Gene. It's not going to happen. But I thank God for the week and the time with my grandson. Y'all pray for us. 
he, he, he has insight, perception, understanding, comprehension of things that a lot of adults don't have. And he's going to be starting first grade in his school system that is already trying to program him that God doesn't exist. And so we spent the time that God gave us poured into that little man's life and making memories. And I was honest with him and I told him the truth. And I told him, I'm not trying to force you to believe anything. You make up your own mind. God gives you the freedom to choose, so do I. If God won't force you to believe anything, then neither am I. But you ask me questions. So here's the answers that I have to give you. What you choose to do with that is your choice. I didn't mean to say all that, but somebody needed to hear it. So anyway, before I left a few weeks ago, last month, I was watching YouTube videos, and Jonathan Kahn was on on a uh, was it a PTL or was it the other one? I forget. No, 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 no. The one that's on Daystar that's... Uh... Huh? No, 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 no. What said Roth? It was a regular program that's on It's on Daystar. Maybe it was PTO. I'm not familiar. I don't remember. But I saw him, so I clicked onto it and I watched. And he was talking a mile a minute. He was going so fast that you can barely keep up with what he was talking about. And he was barely scratching the surface of what he was talking about. Was this? Was a new book that he had put out in 2019? It was just being released. So there was a second part. They talked about some more. Then I caught a different one on somebody else's that he was talking about the same book. So I went ahead, went on Amazon, and ordered it, and I got blessed where I got a hard copy for like. Nine dollars and ninety-seven cents, or something. Nine eighty-seven, some really ridiculously cheap price. I guess was on sale. Whatever. Uh, the paperback was like forty bucks, I think. And I got a hardback for less than ten. And they says, but your shipping, your 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 shipping date, you won't get this till like August the twenty-seventh. I'm like, eh, that's not right. So then I got an update. They updated it to earlier in August. Then I got another update. And they made it the 7th of August. So while I got delayed of being able to go to Fairmont last week and I couldn't leave till Tuesday, my book came on Monday. So I took the book with me. Now, I want to recommend, I don't often do this, you know I don't. But if you haven't read this book, if you're not familiar with it, I highly recommend every one of you buy this book. It's called The Oracle by Jonathan Kahn. I brought the book. The ISBN number's on the back. Don't come up to me after church and 15 of you ask me, Pastor, what was the name of that book? You can't borrow my copy. I read it in three days in its entirety. But it is so deep and so layered with so many things that I couldn't hardly wrap my head around. I'm going to have to go back and read it again. So why are you telling us about this? Well, one, it's Bible prophecy. Okay? And I wanted to let you know, thank you for choosing to attend Radical Change. One of the few places left in the country, percentage-wise, of churches that'll preach on, on, on Bible prophecy and teach prophetic things. This book is about the mystery of the Jubilee cycles. And we're all into the calendars and the different things we've learned over the last year or so. But he goes back through and shows the 50-year cycles of the reversal. See, Jubilee means to return means that which was lost is returned it's given back to you your possession your your inheritance is returned to you that which was lost 
stolen. It, it all comes back. It's all a mystery that was hidden by God within the nation of Israel. And we look at Bible prophecy and we see Israel becoming a nation again on May the 14th, 1947, whatever it was. And the nation appeared overnight out of nowhere. He goes back into this and shows over a hundred years prior of all of the intricacies of people from different nations and continents governmental leaders that were raised up at just such a time and all of the amazing astounding details that we never thought of never heard didn't know anything about that went into place for that suddenly for that nation to pop up brings it through American elections presidents dates of declarations connections to prophecy about Cyrus from out of Isaiah I, I mean you you start reading through this and start looking at all the details how intricate of a plan God had for that one nation so his word could come to pass and it would be fulfilled in the earth if you read this book and you don't believe that God doesn't have control over what's going on in this country You're in there serious need of help. I mean, this will build your faith. When you read this and you see all of the details and see, oh my God, boom. I mean, just blow your mind. I mean, it was so amazing. And I got pretty good comprehension. I could grasp these things. This was so awesome. I had to stop reading and take a break to let my brain try to process what I just read. Not because it's big theological heavy duty egghead stuff. It's so in your face. God's in control. And God did this, 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 and this over this time frame, this time frame. And it keeps running in 50 year cycles that overlap. And not only was it the 50 year jubilee cycles, but 50 year anniversaries of things that happened in between that wasn't on a jubilee, but it still happened on a 50 year cycle. Do you think it was any chance? That Roe v. Wade just got overturned? Let me see. Well, what anniversary was it of that decision? 50. Was it the Jubilee year? No. Was it 50 years? Yeah. And God turned it over. See, it doesn't have to be. You get all hung up on the calendar and say, well, it's got to be during the Jubilee year between the fall and going around in. No. God can do anything, anywhere, anytime, anyhow. He's in control. God's on the throne. And I encourage you to get this book. And don't try to hurry up and see how fast you can read it. I did it because I was just devouring it. But I'm going to have to go back and, and, and go slower this time and take my time. I'm going to have to do some underlining. I mean, it's just... Oh. It'll build your faith. It'll give you hope. And if God could do that, and God did do that, while you don't see what God's doing, doesn't mean God's not doing. He's got his hand on this nation, but not only this nation, but every nation on the face of this earth. Satan may be the little g God of this world, but Lord God of Jehovah Almighty owns this world. He has never relinquished ownership of this planet, nor of the people that are on it. I don't know any other way to put it than that. So if you think that the trash they're trying to pull is going to happen, you need to put your eyes back on God. Put your faith back in what God's doing. 
trust God even when you don't see anything changing don't agree with what you see agree with what God said and if you can't find anything positive to agree with that may I suggest you go start looking on Elijah streams and Elijah list start finding some prophets that you can watch go find Johnny Enlow on rumble go find some men and women that are speaking the word of the Lord into the earth because I don't care which one you listen to they're saying the same things this is soon soon to be turned on its head and we're going to see God do something that's going to cause us to be amazed. And the whole world is going to know it was God that did it. Not a president. Not a council of men. God did it. Be encouraged, man. God's moving. Shake off that discouragement. Do what you got to do, but shake that stuff off. Be encouraged in the Lord. Encourage yourself in the Lord. David said, I would have fainted had I not believed to see the hand of the Lord in the land of the living. Not when I get to heaven. In the land of the living. That's here. That's now. That's in your day, your house, your life, your family, your marriage, your bank account. Is it just so God will bless you? No, it's because God has a plan and a purpose for your life. That gives a whole new separate meaning to that scripture in Jeremiah that says, I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Plans to do you good. Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you an expected end. Now I'm not going to ask you to tell me, but you can answer inside yourself, what expected end do you have on the inside? You expected to go down with a crash? You expected to be consumed? You expected to see it all go bye-bye? So are you agreeing with the trash from the media nights? Or are you going to agree with God? Because God has a plan for you. And if God had a plan for the nation of Israel that that's detailed, that that mind-boggling, Years before the major players were even on the scene, God was working that thing out in different continents with different people. We, we, we want to get this kind of suddenly mentality where all of a sudden God does something. But Gary, God had a plan for your life. And he was working it out. He's still working it out. God's got an expected end for you. He, he has a plan. He has thoughts toward you. And he didn't think, oh, Gary, Gary, Gary. You did it again. What is wrong with you, son? Get with the program. No, he didn't have those kind of thoughts. He speaks the end from the beginning. Whoa! Somebody need to hear that. What end are you expecting? What hope is it that lies on the inside of you that is so scary that you won't even let it out of your mouth to tell anybody else about it because it's so big and so scary and so beyond you that you think there's no way in the world that I could ever do that. No, you can't. But God can. God has thoughts toward each and every one of us and he has a plan that he's made that goes along with those thoughts and those plans are intricate in detail down to the smallest thing that needs to take place 
and he's working them out in your life right now and you may not even be aware that those pieces are moving in your life. But God. Shh. But God. So I hope you were encouraged today. I, I can't imagine how you could be anything less. I mean, the power and the presence of God is just still so thick in here. But I came with the purpose and intent to give you hope. To build your faith. Because God's looking for the remnant that He can bless when He gets His hand. Turns this thing around. The prophets have said it's the ones that stood faithful. The remnant that didn't give up the ones that did quit the ones that stood with him while everybody else was running off at the mouth and going the wrong direction those are the ones that are going to shine those are the ones that the light is going to be really bright and people are going to start seeking you out because they want what you have what they want is Jesus. When's it going to happen? I don't know. He said, y'all going to have to wait long. A week? Two weeks? I don't know. Nobody's really given a timeline, but I did hear something that said for the end of the year, there's only four months left. I mean, we've been waiting for two years. What's four more months? Let your hope be encouraged today. Let your faith be strengthened today. Know that God loves you, created you, cares about you specifically and individually. No life is without plan, purpose, or destiny but that God knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. That the plan and the purpose and the destiny for your life was already written in God's book before you were ever conceived. And if God loves you that much, how much more will He take care of you? You mean that much to Him. It's so easy to get lost in the crush of humanity and think I'm just one in the sea of multitudes of people. What difference could my life possibly make? You ever open up the back of your watch and look at it? All those little itty bee pieces in there moving back and forth intricately put into place I, I can't fix that stuff I just look at it and say Ooh, that's cool put the back back on and put my watch back on right? your life is far more intricate than the inner workings of that watch but every one of those teeny tiny little screws and little bitty gears goes up against the they all work the hands turn until it gets to the appointed time to what God appointed. And when it hits the time when God appointed, there's not anything the devil can do to stop it. There's nothing that every demon in hell can do to hold it back. And they didn't even see it coming. <clears throat> He's in for a bad day. Real soon. Real soon. Thought they had it stitched up. They thought they were going to win. They thought it was already won. God says, Watch this. Little finger. Not even, not even a whole backhand. Just little finger. And wreck the whole thing. That's how awesome the God we serve is. That's how much He loves us. 
You think God's going to let that stuff happen to his people? You better think again. Those are my kids, he says. Well, you, you said you were going to do what to my kid? I don't think so. Oh, no, you didn't. I like what David said in Psalm 2. He said, he that sits in the heavens laughs. You think you're going to do what to my kids? <laughs> he tried to be a comedian. He tried to be funny. That's funny. Yeah. Be encouraged. Have hope. Have hope in God. Have faith in God. Believe that God is. That he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him out. And keep seeking God. And until next week, let Jesus Christ make a radical change in your life today. Amen.